Now, Education Secretary Nazim Zahawi has told schools to prioritise education, not indoctrination, after stories emerged of teachers encouraging students to write letters to the Prime Minister condemning him for the Partygate scandal. Yes, Mr Zahawi was also forced to investigate a council over reports that concerning race theories were being taught in school. He said teachers must make a, quote, balanced representation of opposing views as children must be given the opportunity to shape their own views on political beliefs without being swayed by what their teachers think. Mm, well, I don't even think they should be getting involved in politics with the kids. Anaya Falaran Iman is our GB News uh, Culture and Social Affairs Editor and she joins us now. Now, Anaya, this is just uh, just to talk us briefly through this story about this six-year-old because I know parents were quite uh, quite concerned. Well, there's been a few stories over the last few years about what appears to be politicised teaching. One of the ones that has um, sparked up recently that has um, sparked the intervention by the Education Secretary is the uproar that was caused by Brighton and Hove City Council encouraging um, through their racial uh, literacy training but also so-called anti-racism training um, for kids as young as seven essentially to be taught that they're not uh, racially innocent and this, many parents have effectively pulled their kids out of school I mean that particular council worried that actually white kids being taught that they're innately privileged, black kids being taught that they are disadvantaged and actually essentially imposing racial division in places that weren't previously there. There's also been a video that has emerged of, of teachers encouraging uh, kids to write letters against the Prime Minister over Partygate. But we also see many debates happening over the way gender and sex is being mm. taught. It has been a long-standing issue over the last few years. And uh, Nadim Zahawi has now intervened and he says that we want education, not indoctrination. We'll be publishing guidance in order to make it clear where the boundaries are. But I think the big question is, how is this going to be enforced? I mean, in practice, even if those guidances are there, many teachers uh, bring in third parties to teach many of this stuff. And actually, education has been decentered and mm. in favour of teaching values. And mm. then oftentimes, teachers impose their own values. Mm. And how do you enforce that? I think yeah. It's very difficult. Uh, in, in that case of that six-year-old boy whose parents were told that he might be transphobic because he, he said he felt confused about uh, another pupil, a boy wearing um, a dress, and his parents have actually taken him out and ho are homeschooling him now. The other thing that caught my eye is that the school supposedly said um, that pupils who showed an inability to believe a transgender person is a real female or male... Um, could be deemed transphobic. Mm -hmm. Now, that yeah, makes me uncomfortable as a, the parent of a young girl because, quite frankly, I think my child as a woman has every right. Uh, obviously, she wouldn't be doing that at the moment. She's only seven. But she w should have every right to put her views across and say she feels uncomfortable if there was a boy who wanted to use her changing room at school. Parents and children have these rights and they should absolutely be enforced, shouldn't they? Mm. I mean, but this is the difference between teaching knowledge and then teaching values. So, for example, if you're a history teacher, I absolutely think those teachers have the authority to be able to teach history in the way that they um, think is best for them or teaching maths or teaching English. When you have values, and particularly when it comes to particularly contested ideologies, then this is what happens. So, for example, there is a tension there in education because on the one hand, teachers are also taught that they're meant to be teaching LGBT. LGBT inclusive education and oftentimes how do they think that they need to do that well they think that that means that they need to teach many modern ideas about gender and sexuality and and changing your gender to one thing or another so I think it's very difficult oftentimes to be fair to some teachers to know what to do they're having pressure to teach certain it's things just... around identity but then when they're actually teaching mm. it the materials available are often highly politicized deeply contested and deeply ideological. Well, they, they should just be teaching the subject that they studied and the subject that they're there to teach. I mean, it's, it's not acceptable for them to come in and start teaching their own sort of, or projecting their own ideologies onto the children. And yeah. I, I find it, in, particularly in the story in Brighton, uh, the, the one where someone was, they were taught about that children are not uh, racially innocent, I don't think there were any black people there at all. Mm. And this is the thing, you get people projecting these, these concepts from a, a narrow perspective. And I think this is very, very troubling because if you actually ask the communities where you're supposedly helping, it turns out that you're not helping at all. And those communities would rather you didn't do that. Yeah, and I think it is really worrying for parents that, you know, they're 
want to raise their kid and socialise their kid in a particular way. And they're sending them to school and seeing that they're being raised in ways that are completely alien to the values that they want to raise their kid. And I think it's at the same time where other things that we previously agreed were totally right mm. are also being deconstructed. So we see punctuality being seen as white supremacists in some senses or saying that you know, kids keeping to deadline or actually speaking properly and not using slang. Increasingly, that's being seen. Imposing those kinds of values are being seen as wrong. But actually imposing other values when it comes to gender and, and sexuality and race is seen as increasingly OK. I think that education should go back to a much more traditional framework yes, of subject knowledge, discipline, mm. personal responsibility. And competition, for goodness sake. Exactly. I mean, you're not even allowed to win. If you're like, yeah, I win. No, everyone must win something. Mm. Yeah, there's no such thing as winning. Yes, there is. There's winning. It's the taking very part that counts. <laughs> Rubbish. <Everyone's laughs> that is winning. <laughs> winning is what is important. But yeah, I, I think that the gender one is clearly something that is really important right now. I mean, in Scotland, what we are seeing is that increasingly as well, that they are saying social justice is what are the values that need to be mm. taught in schools at the same time a parental authority mm, is yeah. being undermined. And so I do think that um, it is good that um, Nazima Zahawi has intervened. But I'm not sure it's actually going to go far mm. enough. Well, Inaya Falar and Iman, thank you so much. It's been great talking to you about that. Um, I want to take uh, our viewers and listeners to some of the views that you have been bringing into us. Very much agreeing with what we've been saying. Uh, Janice here says, I think teachers should keep their noses out of anything except to teach reading, maths, etc. Mm -hmm. Unless they have, uh, suspect child abuse, it's up to parents to have conversations with their children about life. Mm, well, Richard says, I completely agree. They should be teaching mathematics, grammar and the science, really. They should be sticking to what they know. Yeah, absolutely. Robert here says... Like in America, where universities are stopping free speech, unless you're on the left, teachers in the UK have never been neutral. They haven't, uh, uh, they're overbearingly left wing. It has to stop. And actually, Mike uh, um, just emailed in as well, saying this has been going on for decades. He remembers being at school and teachers have been blatantly anti-Thatcher and sort of... Uh, well, yeah, I mean, look, I, I lecture. I do go around schools all yeah. the time. I went to a couple of schools last week. And I, as I said, I, I took, we spoke about things and I asked if there's one thing you could change in the world, what would it be? These kids who are extremely young saying oh, Boris Johnson, Boris Johnson, and saying mm. their parents and things. And I thought, well, what, what do you know? What have you been yeah. told? Who's, who's, you know, what, what, what information have you heard? It's, mm. We need to stop doing this yeah. because we are infecting them with our own prejudices and our own stereotypes and our own, you know, it, it, we're preconditioning them to perpetuate something that we ourselves believe. And I don't mm. think that's, that's not learning. That's indoctrination.